morning guys welcome to the monday morning sidewalk here at texas flycaster we're here at the fly bar as usual i've been off uh, out of the scene for a couple of weeks um you know it's going to be impossible to do uh, 52 episodes of this and and uh, maintain my sanity so uh, it's been two weeks you know we had a trip to uh, santa fe working on that story in the background we're going to finish up the story on uh, port o'connor and that last segment of that should be out this week but let's get right down to it and see what's going on this week i uh i know the weather's changed drastically here in north texas it's been amazing that we've had roughly a 40 degree drop in the weather since two weeks ago since five days ago actually we had a cool front come through as that cool front passes on along the coast you'll probably see some drastic changes in fishing and the weather there too you know when i was a kid growing up on the coast we always thought that fishing was over and done when the when the first cool front came we just put our rods away and that was it so that was in the you know late 60s and early 70s and what's happened since then is people you know they didn't want to stop fishing it's a business and they figured out that yeah you can catch fish year round in the salt water in texas so it's a little more interesting now you know the difficulties of, of the wind and things like that when cool fronts are coming changes in barometric pressure and things like that you know that's really um, a huge part of of your considerations uh, of course the tides are different and everything else so there's a lot of things to consider but still saltwater fly fishing it's a year-round thing and here in north texas you know we're so close to oklahoma that that becomes we start to think forward to the next season already and i'm guilty of that as the next person you know with the temperature drops and everything i'm thinking about oklahoma a little bit starting to think about blue river for trout and thinking about beaver's bend really kind of getting serious about that this year because one thing that's happened in uh, oklahoma you know like the last i'd say two years is that they really kind of changed their act a little bit they're getting better fish there and, and beaver's bend broken bow than they have in the past they went to a different uh, hatchery to get their fish and if I'm not mistaken, they don't announce when they're going to stock places. So there's not all these people sitting there waiting for the fish to fall out of the truck into their five-gallon bucket sitting on the side of the water. So that's a great change, in my opinion, and one that I want to really get into look at this year and see. And I've seen photos of great fish, uh, rainbow trout, coming from there and, and even caught a brown or two early spring this year. So browns are my thing, you know, more so than rainbows, but we're going to go see what that's all about. I should have be there in Broken Bow and either Beaver's Bend perhaps uh, for an extended period in January, maybe as long as the entire month of January. So keep your eyes on, this, on the website for that and, and uh, see what your possibilities are to get guided trips at that time. Let me scroll through here and see what else I've got. You know, today is actually Sunday. I've got I've got to go on a trip to Houston for business on Monday and Tuesday. So as long as I'm out that way, I'm either going to try to hit the bayous or try to hit the jetties or something like that. No boats or anything like that, but it should be really interesting. I've still got to uh, kind of jonesing for some of that jetties action, and we'll see how that hap how that works out because I've got everything I need to do it now. I just got to be there at the right time. It's all about timing. Uh, back to the website, you know, I don't like to talk about it a whole lot, but the website's still doing quite well, texasflycaster.com, and, and if you uh, read the site, you notice lately that some things have gone to pay-per-view reading, and, and some things are still free. If you see on the top of a page that it says, click on the headline to read, that's what you want to do is click on the headline and open the whole story. I'm kind of on the bleeding edge on this technology, and right now it's not working exactly right. So that means that it may say you have to pay, but you really don't. If it says it's free, it's free. Just click on the headline and read the whole thing. If it doesn't say that, then it's probably a pay to read, and it's really affordable in my opinion. And, you know, uh, just depends on if you think it's worth it or not. You know, it's a lot of writing over the years. It's A lot of it's still free until the end of the year. That means that... Um, for now, all the old stories going backwards for six, seven years, whatever it is, are still free. Starting in January, you'll have to pay a subscription rate to read all the old stories as well as the new stories that seem to be worth something. And that's what I want. I want to also invite you, if you're a writer or a photographer, to send photos, send stories about fly fishing in Texas, and I'll pay you for the story. As much as, much as the subscriptions read and pay, you'll get paid for it. 
I think everybody should be, be paid for their work, no matter what work it is. Um, it may seem just like a, a frivolous thing, but um, actually there's a lot of work that goes into everything that goes on here. That's my public service announcement for the day. <laughs> So as temperatures have dropped around here, you know, we, we try to re-gear and rethink and right now in my mind's wandering over to Texoma because we do have opportunities as the weather uh, cools off and the water cools down for smallmouth bass, you know, they talk about the winter blitz, but that's something you need a boat for, which I don't have. So can't go do the blitzes, it's too unsafe, the water's too cold and uh, it's just too much traffic at that time. Of course, the weather is always unpredictable. Uh, we certainly do, though, have you know that, that big option of Oklahoma this year and spending extended time there, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm not a you know I don't do stalker fish a whole lot and you know stalker rainbows, but uh, we're just going to see what that's all about. I need to give it a, another thought because things certainly have changed there. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, as I look through, kind of running through things here, as I look through um, the Facebook feeds for a lot of these guys on the coast, I'm seeing a lot of them switch out from, from fishing to hunting now and, and mix the hunting into the thing, whether it's ducks or dove or whatever, which is a smart thing to do. It's just not something I do here where I am. Um, so hats off to those guys and then really, really hats off to the guys that are still out there catching fish on fly. I think I saw Eric Glass has some more snook on the fly, which is spectacular. It's a fish I think about a lot. I put it right up there with smallmouth as a got to get fish for me. And so I know where that's happening. I'm pretty sure about it. I just have to find a way to do it without a boat, which is like kind of like the chink in the armor, so to speak, is, is to be able to go find a launch spot and then go hit these spots, you know, and I think that, you know, the weather down south, the South Padre Island area, Brownsville Ship Channel is so, so moderate, so temperate, you know, year-round almost, that this can be done in December or any time of the year, basically. You know, and that's something that we didn't know. Growing up in the valley, growing up in South Texas, we sure didn't know that you could fish year-round. We First cool front, we usually put our rods away and forgot, forgot about it, but, uh, over the years, that was the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Over the years, people realized, yeah, this is a year-round sport, and you can catch fish year-round. So that really blew the whole thing wide open when it became known as a year-round sport, and, and this year shouldn't be any different. You know, I think weather patterns are already being predicted and everything, but um, it's going to be a, a, probably a, a bumper crop year for wintertime saltwater fishing. I want you to stay tuned, you know, um, this week. Uh, hopefully I'll get a one story or two on one story would be maybe fishing off of the jetties, fly fishing off the jetties in Galveston area or down south or I think it's Seabrook and or um, in the maybe some some work there in the bayous. We'll just see how it turns out. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week. Make sure that um, you arrive safely wherever you drive to to go fishing and and let us know how it goes. I'm anxious to uh, to see your stories and photographs, and if nothing else, you know, hit me with a photograph, and I'll put it on the Instagram feed on the website. If you have any questions or anything like that, just hit me at fly at texasflycaster.com. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys, thanks for sticking with me past the rolling credits at the end of the Monday morning sidewalk, and now you get a tip. This tip comes from Dave and Emily Whitlock, and. You know, as we pass tips around, we don't know where they originate, but this one's a pretty darn good one. You know, it's always best to be the first one on the water and first one in the water. And one of the ways you do that is you get faster at what you do. Well, one of the ways to get fast, really fast, at unraveling a fresh leader is when you've got your leader, you always just you flip this under a certain number of times. I usually do three. I'm into threes, so it's three like that. So I unravel it, the three, like that. And then what you can do is put your fingers back in there like when you first wound your leader on. Put some tension on it. And then you can unravel your leader, any leader, just like it was when you first raveled it and rolled it up. Now, you don't have a messy leader. You're ready to go and fish. Line through leader, leader through line. 
done. Then your tire fly on, you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.